our 20th century, almost every nation in the world has at some time been in conflict. The oppressors and the oppressed, the victors and the vanquished, the people of war, a tragic indictment of our civilization. A time when much of the world was looking for ways to increase their influence, power, and riches. Full of dreams for the restoration of the glory that was Rome, in 1911, Italy joins the hunt for territory. Libya, on the other side of the Mediterranean Sea, is the target. Landings were made at Tripoli. Benghazi, Zwara, Sirt, Derna, and Tobruk. The local population, fighting on many fronts, made fierce and resolute resistance to the invaders, thus bringing the war to a stalemate. 1922 saw a dramatic change in Italy. The beginning of Mussolini's era of dictatorship. The conflict in Libya escalated as more and more fascist might was thrown against the stiffening resistance of the local population. We will overrun the earth, and then we will take the flag of fascism to the sky! More. More. I don't understand. If we defeated the Bedouin, why are we still hanging them? Why do I have to pour troops into a victory I've already won? Oh, I wish my generals would write two different dispatches. One telling themselves of their glorious victories, and one telling me of their defeats. It can't go on. I will not let it go on! There! This green, this fertile green, there's your prize. The rest is brown paper. Just needs someone bold enough to roll it up. Come with me. Twenty years. Twenty fruitless years we've wasted on this war. I sent five governors to Libya in five years. No! Now the military logic of fascism will not be compromised! After all, what are we? We are the Bayonets of a new dawn. What are we fighting reality? Desert tribesmen, ghosts. I want their leader brought here. I want him brought to me. I want the revolution crushed. What's his name? Omar Mokhtar. What? Omar Mokhtar. 
Om Maha Mukta. You know, General, those colonists that we sent over, peasants from the south, they cost us lira for lira almost as much as if we put them up at the Grand Hotel. Now, something must be wrong. No. I will not have a handful of Bedouins up the progress of 40 million Italians. I give you Libya, General. At least you have a name that will frighten you. May I say, my Duce, that when I crush rebellion, I do so with a clear conscience of soldier. What did Mukhtar do before the rebellion? He was a teacher, Duce. A teacher? Yes. I was a teacher. Be careful you don't end up as the five who went before you taught by him. Well, I'm a man who likes action. Go to Libya. General, bring me back Mukhtar. Bribe him or break his neck. In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. It is the God of mercy who has made known the Quran. He created man and taught him speech. He said to the sun and the moon in their courses. He raised the sky up and set the balance of all things. Stop right there. Why do you think we begin every chapter of the Quran with God the merciful, huh? Yes? Because one of the names of God is mercy. That's right, yes. And how, how does God show his mercy? He taught, he taught people how to speak. How to speak, that's right, yes. There, there was something else in, in what we read. Uh, could any, anybody, can, can, can you? Tell me what that was, huh? It was, uh, was... Yeah. Here, yeah. let me give you a hint. It was what? It was the balance. That's right, that's right. The balance. And why, why did God set that balance? Hmm? Boys! Boys, why did God set the balance? Huh? Because... Without the balance, everything would fall. <laughs> no. well, well, let me see what you read. Yes. Uh, 
everything did fall apart, huh? <laughs> what are you waiting for? Come on. Take it to your father. Yes, Pumatari. What is the news? A new governor. Again, huh? <laughs> uh, they always come in like... Like lions. Mm, and go home like worn-out goats. <laughs> well, uh, who is it this time? Graziani, the butcher of Fazan. Graziani. It was only a question of time before they let him loose on us. It will mean a new offensive. My father used to say... Blows that don't break your back. Strengthen it. We will show Graziani some spine. They tell me Graziani loves blood. I don't like to believe those stories. And yet I do. When is he expected? They're decorating Benghazi for him.
Signore, signori, His Excellency General Graziani, Governor of Cyrenaica, His Royal Highness Prince Amadeo, Duke of Aosta. Gentlemen, thank you, but the ladies are present. We should be at our ease. Let the dancing continue. General, Colonel Sarsani. Signore Tomelli. Udeci, here in Benghazi. The sun turns the rest of us black in the desert, but it uh, seems to be turning you white. I came to talk to him. A drink first. If uh, Europe knew what we do here, if uh, even Italy knew. <laughs> but here in Libya, we photograph everything. We're never without a snap, you know. You mustn't tell me too much. Even to tell you we are not abiding by the Geneva Convention? Colonel, don't. Please. <laughs> Colonel Diodici, sir. Ah, yes. Diodici. I read reports on you. They say that you could make friends with the Bedouin with a handshake. I am not so sure that I like that. It implies that the rest of us must strangle them in order to make peace with them. <laughs> Sir, there are 5,000 displaced Bedouin outside my forts. I have no food for them. I have difficulty in controlling them. And I need... Uh... What you need, Colonel. What you need. It's a little bit more of that. Who is that man? Sharif Elgariani. He's quite useful to us. Old friend of Omar Mukhtar. Useful, you say? Yes, sir. Bring him here. I think you'll find that you can rely on him. General Graziani, may I present His Excellency Sharif al -Gariani. I understand that you know Omar Mukhtar. I did. What would it take to get him to surrender? I don't know. Even as a boy, he was terribly stubborn. But if I could be of help in any way, I should be very willing to agree. You'll find that we can be terribly generous.
Lieutenant Chinieri. Urgent message, sir. Can't it wait? You see, you're disturbing my guests. Excuse me, gentlemen. They said that Flaminus lost Trasimeno while sleeping on his dispatches. What is this? Another wasted maneuver? Hmm? How many dead Italians? Twenty dead. Fifty wounded, sir. And they let him go again? Yes. But this time he was seen. He was seen? How do they know he was seen? Nobody knows him. How do they know he was seen? It was only for a moment, sir. But they're sure. It was Mukhtar. I suppose I should decorate them just for the bravery of seeing Mukhtar. There could be, there could be, could be anywhere. Hmm. Tamani, I want you to use a, a fast, hard-hitting force and you forget what Omar Mukhtar looks like. We're all obsessed by never having seen him. Go for his blood. Go for his circulation. Go for the revolution that's inside every Bedouin. Mukhtar's men fight in turns. Three months they run with him. The next three months they're peaceful at home. To money. No peace. <laughs> And, and, and... Yes, that young girl, definitely. <laughs> Some of you are conscripted. Instead of going three months with Mukhtar, you go one year to useful labor, where you'll be out of trouble. Hmm? <laughs> Burn the half they give to Mukhtar. Burn half of everything.
It's a bullet wound, sir. You were shot running with Mukhtar, weren't you? What have you to say? Hmm? What have you to say? Ah! Oh, you do. Well, you've brought it on yourself. Execute him. Not, not over there. Here! Let them see it. In the name of God, give him time to pray. It's not your turn yet. I became old enough today, mother. I need you.
They must pass through here. That is our ground. Out there. That is it. But you can't hide a lizard out there. All clear, sir. Check the other side. At last we've got them, where we want them. Let's crack at some of them. In the open. Sir. Let's go! Sandrini, sir. What the hell is he doing? Maybe warning shots, sir. No, stop! Stop! Check. 
Straight to the order. Do you see anything? No, nothing, sir. Nothing. They are getting away. We have them in our hands. Full pursuit! Those machines. See you, Mark. We do not kill prisoners. They do it to us. They are not our teachers. He's a boy. Tell your general he does not belong here.
my husband. I, uh, I brought his book home. Never turned his back on me. Come here. What is your name? Ali. Oh, yes. Ali. This is yours. This is your book. You tell your mother to keep it for you. Do not let him see you crying too much. One day they will carry on the fight. The children should remember us strong and confident. Never broken. Point sight. Hey, let us go and see the camp, huh, Ali? This is my friend, Ali. Ah, this is Umatari. He is a little boy just like you. He's in Kufra. That's far away in the desert. And he misses him. Now, we have some work to do. To, um, to Cairo, huh? Be careful. Oh, is this supposed to be me, huh? How do I look? <laughs> you have to give him back to me. Otherwise, I cannot read. You go. You go and see that the people work. Huh? All right. I did not come to Libya to be stung by bandits. Signore Tamale was one of our finest officers. At least the young boys that saved our honor. You brought back the flag. But, sir, they gave us the yes, flag. Yes, 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 you will be decorated the, uh, the Medal of Honor. I've never in my career lost a flag. Gentlemen, I will repeat one simple fact to you. We're not merely fighting Mukhtar and 200 of his men here or, or 50 of his men there. We are fighting a population. I have Rome to answer to. I'm therefore taking the first of three final steps, strides, to eliminate rebellion in this colony. It's really quite simple and should have been thought of before. I propose to concentrate the Bedouin. Concentrate them? Yes, put them behind wire in camps and keep them there until we find it prudent or safe to release them. No, I don't want any pity for them. They have brought it upon themselves. We will fill their wells. We will burn their fields. We will destroy their trees. We will turn their land brown. Now, if they cannot live in it, they will leave it. And uh, if you meet a resistance? You answer it promptly with the old Roman punishment for rebellion. Decimation. It is ridiculous to think that we can fight this war kindly. We, we cannot. We can fight it thoroughly. To place half a million people behind barbed wire 
It is a formidable and majestic undertaking. But we will do it. Are there any questions? General, Bedouin die in cages. That is an answer, Highness. Not a question. But sir, won't we, won't we be making more rebellion? Not waiting it out. Gentlemen, if we are to bring the Bedouin to any sense of obedience, we must first let the lava flow. As mutineers and rebels, you will be decimated. Taken everybody. Who can fight such a war? Not against armies, but against innocent people. All people will be dying in those camps and come out. People will be dying without fault. 
without choice. Or is it our fault? And our choice. Look what they did. Raise the sky up and set the balance of all things. Sidioma! be massacred. You have a chance to get away. Take it. Go with Ismail. Don't think of me. Go. Go. Please! 
shrimp! Ah! Go back! Go back for that boy! The horse won't take two! Ismail knows that! Hurry up, City Omar! So you're the brave young man. The brave young man who saved Mukta from me. Why did you do it? You're young. You've got your whole life ahead of you. Tell me, don't you want to live? I want him to live more. You'd make a fine soldier. Would you think of joining us? You're more ruthless than I am, Prince. You'd corrupt him. <sighs> Get him out of here. Give him what he asks for, fruit, honey, whatever. And don't harm him. Hang him in the morning. Does it ever worry you, General, that in our most casual acts, we make history here? Even if it's just a small paragraph in a newspaper in Rome. You touched my strength, Prince. You see, I don't care. A day in the mind of Rome is more important to me than, than a generation in the memory of Libya. And what happens, I wonder, if we're forgotten in Rome and only remembered in Libya? Oh, don't you worry your royal head about that. You see, we'll write the history. Libya is our crown of thorns. Nonsense. <laughs> Libya is a career. Look at it. It's always the same. We can never pursue them in the desert. I must conquer the desert to march on Kufra. From here to here. Simple, isn't it? No, it's not. But it's only empty desert. There's nothing there. Just wind and sand. Not even much opposition. What can you get from it? Glory for Rome. An extension of the empire, confining a revolution to that mountain. My name, and a new 
page in military history. So you see, it's quite full, that desert of yours, isn't it, Prince? I have a surprise for you. Come in! Now is your time. Please, sit down. Thank you. The man who can make peace with a handshake. Do it now. Hands across the desert. I wish you to instigate peace talks with His Excellency. Omar Mokhtar. That will not be so easy now. No, but you will do it, won't you? And what are the preconditions for talks with Omar Mukhtar? Um, <laughs> no preconditions. The whole of Libya is open to discussion. Look at it. <laughs> Look at it. We go to the conference table with an open mind, do we not? He fought us for 20 years. We are an enemy, he knows. He has heard all our promises. 20 years is too long. I mean, can you imagine escaping hanging for 20 years, knowing you can't win, just hoping to keep on? So war is hope. The man would be mad to get on his high horse about past promises. Hmm? When may I, in your Excellency's name, sit down with him? You're too eager. When you talk to Omar Mukhtar, must be with the speed of dictation. But yes. whether he wants to talk or not, you test him, you try him. Yes. I will try him. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming at such short notice. It was very kind of you. Thank you. Well, that's settled, isn't it? The Odicha is not the right man. He'll offer what Mukta can't take, and Mukta will ask what he can't give. Which makes me think you want things to go wrong. It's unfair, of course. I want peace, of course. I want to win that peace. But sometimes, Prince, when you're strong, peace takes on the nature of conquest, is it not? He won't give me peace. What he'll give me is time. And what I need is time. So that's what it looks like. After all these years, we are the first to see him. The old lion. Assalamu alaikum. Can you this? Yes, sir. Please. This side. Colonel Barillo, military governor or merch. This is Commissioner Lobito, 
was come directly from Rome to advise and uh, assist us. You invited us here to talk. We are here. Your Excellency, it is my one wish to see the Italian and the Arab together in a single interest. I foresee a future of common cause, a give and take of character and skill. Our civilization and your culture a marriage of virtues. I want observers from the governments of Tunisia and Egypt to witness any agreements between us. As far as I'm concerned. Out of the question. He is seeking international recognition as if the Bedouin were an independent nation, which they are not. They are subjects within our province. Our arguments are not between nations, but between Italians. We cannot permit outside interference in our internal affairs. And why misrepresent this? We are not Italians who do not tell us that we are. We were born where we were born, only by the will of God, and only by our own mothers. We are not you. But uh, we will come to foreign observers later, huh? As yet, <laughs> there is nothing written, nothing to witness. But we have written. We must have our Muslim schools. Oh, yes. No question. Freedom of education. No question. The schools will be reopened. We must have some form of national protection. We must have a national parliament. The parliament is a matter for Rome. This tent is not the place. Why not? You pitched it. No conditions, you said. No limits, no exclusions. Everything open on this table, in this tent. Let us say that at present, we will note your demand for a parliament. Mark it well. The confiscated lands must be given back. Well, now I wouldn't say confiscated lands. I would say lands reserved for settlement and cultivation. Lands to be developed. To be developed by Italians. I tell you, there is no escape 20 years, 40 years. The land will be back to its people. Why do you think we fight you? But the new settlements will provide employment. As long as you take our lands, for as long as we're able, we must fight you. Must? Yes, we must. But I have it on religious authority that your Koran does not permit you to fight a war you cannot win. Now you are going to interpret our religion for us. The book leaves no doubt. It is our duty to God to defend ourselves against those who have driven us out of our homes. I think this might be a good time to adjourn. We are in no hurry. Why are you delaying? Your Excellency, uh, we are obliged to refer your demands to Rome. At our next meeting, we will give you their answer and make our proposal. At least, at least we know that we all want the bloodshed between us to end.
an Italian innovation. The first to use aircraft in combat. The first to put tanks in the desert. History will mark that, gentlemen. What we needed was time. Now we have achieved that time. We can talk peace. With eloquence. One, Umar Mukhtar's men will come under the command of Italian officers. Go on. Two, the Italian government will pay monthly salaries to these men. Go on. Go on. The government reserves the right to punish any persons who committed a crime before this agreement. Omar Mukhtar will have no right to protect such persons. For these terms mean dishonor. Absolute surrender. Not even subjects for, for discussion. The Italian government undertakes to pay Omar Mukhtar a pension of 50,000 lire a month and to provide him with a comfortable house. Do I deserve so much? Have I been so successful for someone to offer me 50,000 lira a month? You know, by offering me bribes, you are insulting me. Your Excellency, I made that proposal. Believe me, it was not an attempt to bribe you, only to make your retirement Comfortable. How can I be comfortable when my people are in concentration camps? And where is this general who bombs and burns and hangs? Why has he never come here? When terms are agreed between us, General Graziani will be happy to see you. I do not want to see him. I want to see the last of him. And why is he landing troops? Where is he going? To the last oasis? 6,000 drums of water. He is going to Kufra. You never wanted peace. All you wanted was time. You will be with Graziani. If you will not come to terms, I promise you immediate and terrible war. I know the power of your government, the power you threaten us with. We've stood against you for 20 years. And with the help of God, we will stay with you till your end. I knew this conclusion. against the modern army. This Kufra, no question. Thousands of soldiers and machines, all going to Kufra. Graziani is doing what no one has ever done. He's putting tanks in the desert. The time is on our side. But Graziani is marching south. 
to Kufra. We attack the north. We draw him back. But we must fight him for Kufra. Sometimes it is braver not to die. What is lost, count as lost. We know your family is there. But to defend Kufra is to die there. I must go. Yes. Yes, you must. Ready to pepper them? Yes, sir. Good. Then give them hell. Lieutenant Sandrini, open fire. Commanders.
hide everything on them. Armor to the front. Consulate Sarsadi's orders. No retreat. We fight and die here. Vicino al muro! A te al muro! Dai! Belli a te! A te al muro! Portati! Forza! Va bene!
Gentlemen, this is Kufra. Atenti! Zintad! Halt! Seizure of Kufra has hurt us deeply. It has closed the south. The only road for military supplies is across the Egyptian border. We are in desperate need of supplies, food. Three Italian cars coming up the merge road. How many? Three. They're flying white flags. Let them in. We will finish later. To come through, we had to use the Italian cars. And you found them comfortable? We want to talk to you alone. What we have to say cannot be said in public. Then it is not to be said to me. Oh, Ma, why do you not surrender? Obtain the best terms you can from the Italians. Mohammed Rida can arrange a safe conduct for you out of the country. Safe conduct? Where to? Egypt. Ah, to Egypt. To hide with his brother. You are the only Sanusi left in this country. And look at you. Just... Just look at him. But my people have fought to defend your own privileges. Where are you now? Omar Mukhtar. The Italians assured us. You'd better get back to them. My friend, they are the government of this country. No. They take this land by day, but by God, we take it back by night. Omar Mukhtar, you are alone. Cut off from the rest of this country, isolated from the rest of the world. In the League of Nations, they will not speak. And if they should, they will not listen. No one will care. This battle is not being fought in the League of Nations. This battle is being fought here, on this land. Omar, you cannot win this war. Your blood against their metal. Every man has two days, his own day and his children's day. Your children are starving, dying in the concentration camps, dying because you persist in fighting. Yes, yes, they are hostages of war. But not one of them betrays me. Not one has asked me to surrender because they know, and I know, that if I surrender, I betray them. Omar, we grew up together. Don't you remember 70 years ago, we were boys together? Yes. Yes, I remember. Look how far apart we have grown. This may be the last chance you have of seeking an honorable peace. They steal our land, they destroy our homes, they kill innocent people, and you call it peace. I will not be corrupted by that man's peace. Perhaps we should go. Yes, I think you should. Yes, you should.
Luca? Yeah. You're alive. Yes. With Sidi Omar. I prayed for you. When you see Ismail, show him the bag. He gave it to me. Was he a brave boy? Will you be back? Yes. But not for some time. Up you get, come on. Out! The child is sick, sir. I don't want him. I won't care. You're accused of giving aid, comfort, and sustenance to the rebels in the mountains. Do you admit these capital crimes? So you're admitting your guilt. You will all hang by your necks until you are dead.
is the holder of a silver medal of honor, Lieutenant. You will have the privilege of giving the order for the execution. No! What did you say? You will do your duty, Lieutenant. I did not join the army to hang women, sir. Very well. Capo Manipolo! Lieutenant Sandrini, you will consider yourself under arrest. Thank you, God, for the lives you have given us. do you refused your duty insubordination is a very serious offense when your officers start to cry conscience you don't know where it'll end do you i'm prepared to answer to court martial sir indeed and i'm not prepared to lose one of my colony's new heroes a hero i created I will not give you the pleasure nor the publicity of a court martial, Sandrini. As an officer, you were taught to obey, not to question orders. Yes, sir, but. Do not dispute with me! The state has needs that outweigh the conscience of the individual, demands that go beyond individual intelligence, don't you agree? Yes, sir. You will report to Sarsani for duty in the mountains. I will give you the honor of dying on active service. Take care of the tanks. I'll block the benzene. The old man has these mountains, and he uses them. And I proved that. Now, beyond this mountain range, there is a plateau upon which instinct, instinct tells us that tanks can't operate. Now, that is not true. It will be difficult, yes, but it will, it will be decisive. Now, we control the approach roads here, here, and here. These are tank roads now. Use them, will you? So, oh, yes, I can. Intelligence. 
If I can think about it, you execute it, especially if I can put you on that plateau without a shot being fired at you. Yes, sir. I'll direct Mukhtar here using artillery, gas, aircraft, no armor. Once he's committed himself 30 kilometers to the west by this road, I will then push my arms through. That'll leave them with their mouths open. Let's flush them out. Pearson. Yes. We must get to high ground. Get back to high ground! Move! Everybody! given us five days and nights of it. He's making a big push for the mountains. And only using artillery. His tanks and armored cars are useless in the mountains. They can only operate on level ground. But he forced us here. What does that suggest? He wants control of the mountain roads. Yes. And what is there? The bridge at Wadi Al Kuf. That is what he wants. Gentlemen, this time he won't get away. First, we take the bridge. Get our armor behind him, artillery in front of him. Then we pound him into submission. But the bridge, sir, I am surprised that the Mukhtar hasn't tried to cut it. That's because he's a natural fighter, not an educated one. He didn't go to military academy like you, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now's the time. We dangle the bait. Check the bridge. Sergeant, check the bridge. All clear! Right, check the next bridge. I'll hold this one here. Careful. He is showing us nothing. That is bait. We should have blown up the bridge. No. Scout cars, we must stop them. Give the signal.
prepared the artillery to open fire. Blast them.
is good. He is good. This old man is good. <laughs> my dear general, my dear, dear general, I hope you don't mind that I share some of your credit, but after all, I chose you. I hope to, Jay, that I can... You can have anything you want. You're the most fortunate man in this room. I have physically moved the war from the desert into the mountains. The last remnant of the enemy have now run into holes. We find ourselves in a position whereby we are forced to pull them out by their necks one by one. Ducci, I, I don't know. I know. You're having difficulties. You're having problems with them being in the mountains. I don't seem to have an enemy to fight. Yet their attacks are incessant. I mean, they have no form. If they had form, I could, I could meet them with form. But they have no, no continuity of movement, no, no fixed points of position. I haven't, however, come to my Ducci empty-minded. I have a radical solution, a new Hadrian's Wall, uh. except that Hadrian used his walls to shut the barbarian out. I shall use mine to shut him in. I propose my duce to fence in Libya, to run a wall of impassable wire across the desert, from the Mediterranean to the shores of this sea of moving sand. It'll cut the enemy off from his supplies out of Egypt and cut him off from his retreat into Egypt. Duce, my Duce, hundreds of miles of barbed wire. But is it possible to know the cost? Why do you question Hadrian's Wall? Remember, it was Hadrian's Wall that kept the Romans in Britain 100 years longer. Thousands of tons of equipment, 4,000 men, six months and the whole job completed to the last barb. You old fool. You don't even look at a Rome vision that Tacitus himself would have been proud of, do you? We are coming up uh, to a big cut, sir. They were trying to get through with wire cutters and 5,000 rounds of ammunition. Now all he has is the trickle from the concentration camps. 
And we'll dry that up, gentlemen. We will dry it up. How many bullets have you? Twelve. At this rate, we'll soon be down to fighting them with stones. How long can we last? Till doomsday. Nothing has got through for a month. We're fighting barbed wire. The wire will win when it tears our spirit. Only then. Yes. Yes, the wire is hurting us. Yes, it is. It is around our neck. But it is God. Not Graziani and not him who decides what becomes of us. What is the will of wire compared to the will of God? They have eight million bayonets. We have one that matters. And we are not alone. We have many, many fronts. And others are fighting beside us. Same dust. Why don't you sleep? I feel better sitting up. We will sleep back at the camp.
Ah, Cessate il fuoco! Basta! Ah. Suicide, sir. They tie their legs so they cannot run. Taken in arms. You, shoot him. There are more in there. Follow them up. Go on. You took him. Shoot him. <laughs> you idiot. I said I shoot him. Well? Yes. I can 
confirm the identification. I'm distressed to see him like this. How can you say that? He's led the rebellion against us for 20 years. As a gallant enemy, Omar Mukhtar should be treated by us with dignity and with respect. With respect? He should have been whipped all the way here. You forget yourself, sir. So, is there anything I can do for you? Well, if you would allow me a little water. I could make myself ready for prayers. Of course. And the chains while I pray? Out of the question. He only wants to pray. I'm too old to climb walls or to fight barehanded. Remove his chains for an hour. On your own personal responsibility, sir? Yes. Bring the water.
I've come a long way to meet you. Now you must wait. I want to ask you one question. Why did you keep going for so long? I mean, surely you didn't hope to drive us out of Libya with so little, did you? We fought you. That was enough. And you cared nothing about the ruination of your country. You are the ruination of my country. What would you do if someone occupied your land? Did you ever think how your attacks might serve, seem to us? Ambush, murder by night, deception by day, threats against the farmers. Farming our land. Libya is not your country. You have no right in it. Not to the pasture one cow. Not one minute of right. Italy has as much right here as anybody else. England has a right to Egypt, France to Tunisia, Algeria. Spain to Morocco, but none of them have our pedigree. We have hundreds of years of right here. Soon you will take everything from me. And you want me to justify your thefts. No nation has the right to occupy another. We are back here, that's all. No one can deny us. Read the date on this coin. It's a coin of the Caesars, dated, minted in Libya. You will also find Greek, Turkish, Phoenician coins. All over Libya you find them. Buried in our sand. Yes, I had forgotten. You are short-sighted, aren't you? Your spectacles, I believe. The day they brought them to me, I knew you wouldn't be too far behind. My spectacles. We are both your prisoners. That will not be trivial. Take them back. Here. Yes, it does have an interesting past. But don't try to buy too much with it today. Your money, like your glory, is not permanent. But I, I respect your past, as you must respect ours. We too have a history in science, mathematics, and medicine. In your dark ages, we led the world in learning. How many days will it take you to arrange the surrender of your men? We will never surrender. We win or we die. And don't think it stops there. You will have the next generation to fight, and after the next, the next. As for me, I will live longer than my hangman. What makes you think I'm going to hang you? I mean, it might suit my peppers better to pension you, mightn't it? If I hang you, I run the risk of leaving an open grave. But on the other hand, you are a prime example. You can only do to me what God decides for me. 
Those chains are uncomfortable. They are uncomfortable facts. Sit down. Thank you. Do you know, I had always hoped that, that you and I, implacable enemies, might sit down on the day of your capture and discuss like Caesar. General, Omar Mokhtar cannot give you the conquest of Caesar. I've hunted you for so long. I mean, knowing each other as we do, an idea. And today is a day I work for you? Why don't you ask me for your life? I might give it to you. Like that. What do I give you? My collaboration? No. No. You are too late for bargains, Mukhtar. You are far too late. I have not asked you for my life. Do not tell the world that in the privacy of this room, I asked you for my life. No. No, I will not do that. I will not lie about you. You are a man of courage. Let us hope that you can keep that courage tomorrow. The rope of your justice is always hung in front of me, General. I've been photographed. I wish my enemies to be recorded. Instruct the president of the court that he must be hanged in front of his people. They must be there. Omar Mukhtar, you are accused of open rebellion against the lawful government of your country. What age are you? Seventy-three. Are you the head of the forces in Libya fighting against Italy? Yes, I am. Have you taken part in attacks on Italian soldiers? Yes, I have. For how long have you taken part in attacks on Italian soldiers? Twenty years. How many attacks? <laughs> you know, uh, I, I couldn't remember the number. You ordered the torturing and murdering of Italian prisoners. I did not. Never. You were captured with arms in your hands. Yes, I was. I am an Italian soldier. In the field, I would be his enemy. But here, 
I'm obliged to. I'm appointed to defend him. You are an old man. Older than all of us here. And I will not abuse you with too many questions. Did you ever submit to the Italian authority? I did not. Did you ever receive money or other subsidy from the Italian government as a condition of good behavior? I did not. Never. I declare that Tomar Mukhtar never submitted to us, never took subsidy from us, never recognized our right to rule in this colony. He cannot, therefore, in logic or justice, be tried by us as a rebel. When we captured Omar Mukhtar, after 20 years of battles, we are morally obliged to deal with him as a prisoner of war. Is in court. Captain Lontano, you were ordered to defend this rebel against the charge of treason. You have uh, overstepped your orders. The sentence on you, Omar Mukhtar, is death by hanging in public in the town of Saluk at 11 o'clock tomorrow, the 16th of September 1931, year nine of the fascist era. From God we come, and unto God we shall return. In the name of the government of Tripolitania Cyrenaica, we execute this sentence as decreed by the military tribunal of Benghazi on the 15th day of September 1931, year nine of the fascist era. Omar Mukhtar, you have been found guilty of high treason both morally and materially, of a sustained rebellion against the Italian government of this colony. The sentence passed by the court, death by hanging in a public place, will now be carried out. Centurione, proceed. Reposo.
Thank you, God, for letting me die at the hands of my enemies. surrender. We win or we die. You will have the next generation to fight and after the next, the next. As for me, I will live longer than my hangman.